Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate, where topical issues are discussed in a no hose bad manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. Famous author Charles Handy once said, Citizenship is a chance to make a difference to the place where you belong. The worth of the Nigerian citizenship is at the top of my mind today. Comfort in Abuja is lending her voice to the conspiracy of silence on the issues of domestic violence and sexual abuse. On her part, Ejemai is talking about our responsibilities to depict our culture and tradition in likeness in children's literature. And finally, but by no means the least, Omoni is advocating on the necessity of mentorship by public schools alumni. Sit back, the panelists are here to present your Sunday dose of provoking thought with no, with no host bars after this break. What is a Nigerian citizenship worth anyway? I watched with trepidation, anger, and surprise when last week, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Idris Wase, in what aptly fits into a national embarrassment, prevent Honorable Mark Tessa Gbila, the member representing the Chief Constituency, from presenting a petition on behalf of his constituent writing under the umbrella of the Mutual Union of Thieves in America, MUTA. These were consigned Nigerians resident in the diaspora and who sought to register their protest over the utter neglect and wanting violation of the fundamental rights of their kids and kin back home in Nigeria by marauding and criminal headsmen. In that horrid encounter between Wase and Rebu Bila on the one hand, and the cavalier disposition of other members of the house, why is the horrible scene played out? The worthlessness of the Nigerian citizenship is put in graphic display from one of the most unfortunate places where it could have played out. I was so ached about the display that I couldn't help post a series of tweets in the manner so unusual of me in terms of the words I reserved for the Deputy Speaker. It is not only that Honorable Washe was ignorant, he was also arrogant and looked so self-assured while at it. His premises were fallacious and so his conclusions were bound to be faulty. It is as follows, that Nigerians who are in diaspora cannot be heard in complaint about what is happening in their fatherland. Really? He said he would rather listen to a petition coming from Nigerians living in Nigeria, but not anyone in diaspora. Do they really know what is going, what is going on here if they're in America? Do they have dual citizenship? Was it asked with astonishing arrogance? Now, assuming some of the organization or some members of the organization have dual citizenship, how do we explain that a leader of parliament does not know that the Nigerian constitution is built on duality of citizenship? And by querying whether these patriotic citizens know what is going on here, we must really pause to wonder whether Honorable Wase is really with us in a world that continues to get narrower by the day. I think it is to our collective embarrassment and shame that Honorable Bila was eventually forced to drop the petition, thereby depriving the petitioners from their right of expression in an institution designed to aggregate the views of the citizens. What a victory for ignorance and arrogance, the bane of Nigeria. How do Nigerians in diaspora take pride in their fatherland when it is clear that their opinions back home don't matter? Or are they only consequential in Nigerian life in terms of their remittances back home? These are posters that go to the heart of the national question. Honorable Wase is a four-time member of the House of Representatives. With all the experiences he is expected to have gathered and the influence he wields in official and unofficial Nigerian life, that horrible display illustrates the leadership crisis in Nigeria 
and further underscores the need for a leadership recruitment process, as one of Nigeria's top leaders rightly argued. While the doubt of that encounter might have settled, the harsh realities or the harsh lessons, however, remain that the Nigerian citizenship is worth little or nothing, irrespective of where we are resident. So, Mr. Uh, Omoni, you, you, you followed that encounter that played out between uh, the, uh, the deputy speaker and uh, Honorable Bila last two weeks. What do you make of that, um, of that proceedings? Uh, it, it, uh, when I saw it, one of the first things I thought was, maybe they didn't even know that they were on TV. Yes. Okay? Because those, those were things that you would say privately in your living quarters. But when you are in front of the whole nation, you, sh you should be more circumspect to be sensitive about the kind of things you share and say. Now, now implying that Nigerians outside Nigeria do not have a right to be concerned, do not have a right to have a say with things that happen in Nigeria, is like you said, uh, a fallacy. Especially uh, in this age that some countries are, are, are trying to, to take on overseas voting, having people that don't live in the country who are citizens being able to vote in an election, and you have this kind of comment, it's, it's not acceptable. I, absolutely. I agree with you. When you talked about the angle of um, diaspora voting, as a matter of fact, when this whole event played out, part of the context I built around my tweet was that other countries like uh, Ghana, South Africa, even Mali, have all allowed their citizens who are in the diaspora to participate in the uh, leadership process at home. Uh, meanwhile, here in Nigeria, we have seven problems having members of, who are in the diaspora to even have a say, not in the electoral process, but just to be heard on issues affecting their kids and kin back home. Very, very, very unfortunate. Now, um, uh, Ejimai, the, we have a ministry, uh, we have a diaspora commission in Nigeria. Yeah. And in recent times, to, uh, in fairness to the person in charge of that uh, commission, uh, uh, what is her name now? Abike Abike. She's been doing some good job, yes, really. uh, making yeah. interventions on behalf of Nigerians outside the shores of this country. And then uh, with, the, with what played out in the house, how do you reconcile uh, this is supposed to be a government that should work uh, as, uh, as a team? So how do you reconcile this... Um, uh, 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 how should, should I call it um, um, contradictions in terms of uh, the, the, the government handling of issues? I think for me it just shows the lacuna in the knowledge, the gap between <laughs> the political class and of course um, the regular Nigerians because when you feel that you're not a part of the society or when you're so aloof yeah. Yes, you're so devout of reality. Yeah. You, you think that you belong to a different class of people. So much so that you feel it is in your place to stop somebody from airing their opinion. The question should not even be whether or not these Nigerians are in the diaspora. It's a question of every Nigerian should be given an opportunity to air their view. Sorry. And if you look at this thing, it goes way into our culture, deep into our roots, where because you're older than somebody, you don't want to give the opportunity to the person to air their opinion. Yes. That is what played out here. Mm -hmm. And you know, you go around with that mentality. While um, we have some parts of Nigeria or Nigerians, they are educated, they give room for development, for inclusion, they try to carry everybody along. Like you mentioned the work that Abike Dabiri is doing. She's always on Twitter, pushing for the rights of Nigerians living abroad. Yes. Then you have something like this being played out on the house. It just shows you the disparity in knowledge. And of course, we must continue to advocate for training for our leaders. He spent four terms, you said, yes. in the house. Yes. But of course, the, the, 16 years. <laughs> the lack of knowledge 16, is still apparent. 16 wasted years. It's still apparent, actually. Now, come forth. Yes. Now, while, mm -hmm. while I watched that session, what also caught me was um, how other members sat as though what was being discussed never mattered to them. As a matter of fact, one of them said, Honorable Bila, sit down. And the young man moved to intimidation, he sat down. What does that say about how the House of House of Representatives, how does it function? Um, I mean, is it that none of them could have Andrew reason to um, amplify the, 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 the merits in Bila's presentations? 
when um, Ejemai uh, was making her comment, it occurred to me that really none of when she passed, when, when she uh, referred to Abike Dabri, I thought that Abike herself, you know, would have, you know, come to his rescue, even if nobody else did. I thought she should have been the head of um, the diaspora desk. And I wondered, as you said, now more than ever that we do need support, not just from inside, but from without. How do they go back to the diaspora? For example, when they travel and they want to see the community, when it's when um, the diaspora community decides that they want to put money together to bring back into the country, to help the country, are they going to have the moral right and standing to ask the, these diasporans that they have said, well, you know, we, you don't have the freedom of expression in your own country, um, you know, to show your concern. And it just shows us the quality of leaders we have put in the National Assembly. I thought the constituency that had elected um, the deputy speaker would have been scandalized, horrified, and demanded for his ex for his immediate uh, recall. But alas, we had a pin drop silence. And so I hope that you know, with the number of things that we see seem to think are changing or we're opening our eyes on, that the next election circle, people will begin to say, look, we need people who are informed, because this was a complete. Um, and travesty uh, and showed an astonishing uh, amount of ignorance on the part of the deputy um, and speaker. But as I said, um, when you don't know anything, you, that's actually the time that you're the most arrogant. So it's unfortunate on all fronts. I, I agree with you, absolutely. Um, now, um, Mr. Moni, um, it is good to learn that um, when the speaker, the Honorable Speaker, returned back to the chambers, Honorable um, Femi Bajabia Miller, he he had to uh, move Mr. Gbila to um, to present the petition on behalf of his constituents who are in the diaspora. How do you see the act of the speaker? Well, it, it's uh, first saving for the national uh, for the House of Representatives. Uh, uh, a, a bit of damage has been done, yeah. and um, I hope that the leadership of the House will try and um, connect with Nigerians in, in diaspora. You know, there was a time some years ago when there was this joke that every family in Nigeria had a relative in the UK. Yes. Uh, and I think it's much worse now. Uh, it, it just... Uh, and for people that are even trying to leave the country now, some of the things they will tell you is, even if I leave, my roots are here, family is here, uh, this is there, this is there. So if I go, I will always be linked to this land. Yeah, a part of you is still yeah. here. So, so one, one of the biggest things that these people can give us is to come back and to all, or even, even if they don't come back, to always be there uh, caring about the people they've left here because that means they have a uh, they, they they are vested in Nigeria. They always be vested in Nigeria because their people are here. So, what do we do? Let's work with them. Sure. Okay, okay. Uh, now, Ejo, might just to wrap up uh, uh, to wrap up uh, this session. The the deputy speaker was of the view that um, um, if you are not that if they are not in the country, how can they know what is happening here? I mean... You don't have to be a resident of a country to know what is happening in the world. I mean, the world has gone so globalized and we see people True. from outside the country making impact in their, in, their, in their home countries. And it's actually, the world is at a point whereby we are actually online, yes. real yes. time. I mean, if, if, if nobody, if anybody was uh, of a different impression, and it's COVID-19, has taught us that has flattened the whole house. It has become you know? so, so flat. There, there are times that something happens in Lagos, mm -hmm. and it is your relative uh, far elsewhere. away elsewhere tells you about uh, it outside the country. And they're so correct. Before you, who are in Lagos, knows. How can that actually happen? How can they claim that mm. 
if you're not in Nigeria, how do you know what's happening in Nigeria? Well, we all live on the internet. It just goes to further um, underscore the problem uh, uh, with leadership in Nigeria, and uh, we must commend the Speaker of the House of um, Rep for that um, intervention. And uh, with that, we've come to the end of this segment of the show. Um, when we come back from this break, Comfort gives us her own piece of advocacy. Table tough. <laughs>